Good morning, everyone. Welcome to day three, four. At this point in RSA, you, you start to forget what day it is, what time it is, where you are. But uh, but uh, I made it here, and I am delighted to be joined by Deepika Chuhan, Chief Product Officer at DigiCert. Welcome. Welcome. Nice to be here. So um, let's just start. Tell me, tell me about DigiCert and what your what the value proposition is. Yes. Um, so DigiCert is the leading provider of digital trust. Mm -hmm. And uh, what exactly digital trust means uh, can differ across organizations. But essentially, digital trust is the foundation of the connected world. So if you think about it, um, so many people are online. We're using so many different kind of devices. Many workloads are moving to cloud, and all of this is a connected world. How do we make sure that we have confidence in all those transactions? And that is digital trust. Mm -hmm. And the reason it matters to the organizations is because, number one, they want to make sure that there's the risk of outage or risk of business disruption is not there. With increasingly complex, complex IT infrastructure, they want to limit uh, any outage that they have because there's a huge economic loss. Mm -hmm. The number two is, again, with increasing complexity, you're seeing more and more more attack surfaces, whether they're via software or devices, and so they want to limit the breach, and they want to protect against that. And finally, number three is not about risk or not about compliance, but innovation. With the increasing digitization, um, more and more companies are looking at new different ways in which they can innovate, whether it's securing elections or providing patient care and medical, uh, uh, medical infrastructure. And essentially, these are the three key core elements that Digital Trust provides. And with DigiCert being the leading provider of Digital Trust, that's the core mission. Now, talk about how the organization builds Digital Trust. So... Um, if I'm a prospective customer and I'm coming to you, um, what's that? What's that? Ele the elevator pitch? Well, give me. You can give me more than an elevator pitch, but yeah. Let's take digital trust as building blocks. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, if you just think about trust, it's about different entities who may not even know each other. So it's a, it's, it's a hugely driven by compliance and regulation. So the first and foremost building block is that we need to make sure there's compliance, adherence to the compliance happening across the organizations. And there are a lot of different entities which are ensuring that there's standards for the compliance. The CA Browser Forum, European Union has different uh, rules. Japan may have different rules. There are different SOC rules. And across the organization first as a customer is making sure there's a compliance with the standards and providing the industry standard PKI certificates to protect your users, your servers, your devices. Mm -hmm. Number two layer of the building block, I would say, is um, operational. And this is where it's really important when you're talking about key transactions being secure, the availability and the infrastructure support is very critical. If you think about the RAS, the reliability, availability, and scalability aspect of it. So that's the second layer, that it's very important across the globe that we have that basic uh, infrastructure availability. And combined with that is the validation. Because it's not as if I trust you once, sometimes things can change. And just like your driver's license has to be renewed at a periodic basis, your trust elements have to be renewed as well. So there's a validation link to that, that are we validating that this website belongs to an organization which can be trusted? I mean, let's just look at the trade compliance. Rules change all the time. Mm -hmm. The third layer which comes into play is more about how do you manage the trust? The layer number one and two are all about establishing the trust. I trust you. I trust this device. I trust that server. But with increasing complexity, the third layer is 
there's so much complexity of servers, users, and devices. And it's not just that. It's the different software. It's the different documents. It's the different devices, like the cameras. And organizations don't even know what certificates are available across all of them. And that's why they face outage. Even some of the biggest organizations, even Elon Musk recently on Twitter, he posted about a Starlink outage linked to a certificate expiration. So with increasing complexity, the need becomes that you need to be able to manage trust. You need to know what's out there. And then you need to know when certificates are expiring. And then you need to make sure there's automation happening. So the managing trust becomes really important. And finally, I would say the fourth layer is about extending trust. Because when organizations are managing trust, it's not that we are looking, living in an isolated world. It's not just that we are protecting our employees and our users and servers. Mm -hmm. It's also about when I'm using a certain software within an organization, it may be using a lot of open source components. The number of devices that I'm using may be coming from different places and there may be different content provenance for some of the documents and the images. And how do we make sure we are tying to the extended world and this is where extending the trust into the new ecosystems. Can we look at the software binary and say who signed it? Is it even signed? Mm. Or are we running malware on our systems? So I think those are what I would say is the four key building blocks. Compliance and operation number one. The second one being establishing trust, the operations and the validation around it. The third one being managing trust. And finally, the fourth one, extending it into the ecosystem. Very good. So there is a partnership with Oracle to talk about. So do tell. Yeah. So we are very excited about um, Oracle and DigiCert partnering together. Um, Oracle has uh, the best-in-class enterprise software as well as the cloud infrastructure, which is built uh, from a security-first mindset. And DigiCert is, being, is the leading provider of digital trust. What we're excited about is the options it provides our customers. More and more, especially in the world of digital security, what the customers want is data sovereignty, that the data lives where they are, whether it's within the country or within the region, for example, say European Union, and they're uncomfortable about data being there, say, out of running out of European data centers for some of the very critical needs. I'll give you an example. One of the customer use cases we are solving is um, election security. Mm. So in one of the Asian countries, the youth, they're partnering with us in making sure that the ballots are secure, the person who's counting the ballots is authenticated, all happening digitally. But for something so critical, they want to make sure that all the data is residing in that country. So the jurisdiction sensitivity is very critical. And our message to customers is, you know what you want in terms of where your data needs to reside, and we are not going to force you to reside that data somewhere else. So we will meet you. You want the data within your country or within the region or within on-prem, and that's where the partnership with OCI is very um, exciting because they have wide availability in 42 different regions, and we can actually deliver on that promise together to our customers. Very good. Now, every RSA conference has its um, focus of hype. So for three years or so, it was zero trust. Yeah. Um, then we get to this year, and everybody's talking about the role of artificial intelligence. Um, any thoughts on the role artificial intelligence has to play in what DigiCert does, or and that can be everything from how you use it to boost the product, or how you use it to protect clients. That's a great question. Um, and with every hype, you know, there's always an element of customer needs yep. um, associated with. Mm -hmm. With artificial intelligence, as exciting as it is, I think it only increases the need for digital trust. 
Because when you're seeing an image or even a video, how do you actually know that the person who is talking actually said those things? Somebody is watching our video. How do we know that it is me who is saying those things or it is you who is asking those questions? Um, that, that goes across all the different content. And there's a content authenticity aspect of it that, and content provenance that how do you have non-repudiation? How do you attach trust to not just who said it once, but as that content gets changed, gets edited, that you're attaching the trust element across the journey, across the provenance, across the supply chain? So I think that's true for artificial intelligence as well, whether it's deep fake or or whatever whatever content is being generated to answer any any question, how do you make sure that that can be trusted? Mm-hmm. And this is where there are opportunities as well as um, if we want to make sure that uh, artificial intelligence really takes off, we need to instill the confidence in people that they can actually believe in it. Yeah. Any parting thoughts? Well, I think it's... So first, it's super exciting to have the RSA back to what it was. I think this is the first RSA after COVID where it was, where everybody is getting together and yeah. talking about new innovations. But I think this RSA conference is also very pivotal because the world changed so incredibly during the COVID years. The increasing digitization which happened has only accelerated some of the trends uh, related to security. And yep. this is why it's very exciting, the digi- digital trust, um, as well as other messages from uh, the conference are extremely relevant mm-hmm. across the board. So I would say, I think the increasing, what we are seeing in all the organization is digital trust being a strategic imperative and organizations thinking broadly across the board that with changing trends, with more workloads being on the cloud, with zero trust infrastructure, people working remotely, more coming into the um, identity parameters, so to speak, in terms of the devices that people are thinking about strategically, how do we actually protect? And you're seeing some of that. You actually have people uh, appointing digital trust officers in the organization, Mm -hmm. thinking holistically, because we are in a connected world and the parameter is only increasing and identity is a new parameter. Well, it's been wonderful having you here, and um, have a great rest of RSA. And um, same to all of you tuning in. Thank you, Bill.